What's up guys, Kowalski here from Temple Rider Airsoft, and today I'm actually going to do my first gun review. Um, this is my WE AK-74 uh, gas blowback. I got this from eBike. I believe I paid a little over 150 bucks for it. I can't really remember. Um, had it for a few months. I fielded it a couple times. Um, it's awesome. It's really fun to shoot. The, um, the kick is really insane. Um, yeah, I'm actually really excited to field this um, for some upcoming uh, Milsim ops. Um, this does feature the full travel bolt. Um, some AKs only come back to like here or so, then go forward. This has full, I believe it's like uh, eight inches of travel. Um, it's pretty cool. You can pull the bolt back and lock it up by uh, flipping the selector switch up and obviously back down when you're ready to fire. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically go over this gun uh, for what I've done so far to it and also then show you how to install um, I have an RA Tech hammer and an RA Tech uh, firing pin. Both are steel, of course, if you guys are familiar with RA Tech. So I'm just going to start from the front and go back and um, get started. So when I got this gun out of the box, um, basically just looks just the way it was, except for um, the paracord stock and the flash hider. Flash hider, mine came with a uh, crappy plastic birdcage style. Uh, flash hider with a freaking pin in it. Um, that was pretty fun getting off. Um, it says online that it comes with a steel um, flash hider, but it really does not. I'm not really sure why they even bother to say that. Um, just be advised when you, if you do buy this, this is the Matrix uh, 74U flash hider. This part is not steel. <clears throat> the only part that is steel is the is the uh, thread adapter that goes on the end here. I have magnet. This does not stick to this. So, whatever. Good job, Matrix. <clears throat> Works perfectly fine. No worries there. So, internally, the only thing that I've done so far is put a maple leaf bucking on. Um, the stock launch is crap. You might as well just, if you're going to order a gas gun, uh, especially WE, um, just go ahead and get a Maple Leaf. Um, I believe this one has a 75 degree bucking in it. Shoots pretty darn good. Um, haven't fired it in a while since it's been pretty cold and you know gas guns don't like cold. Um, I put a real steel Magpul MOE grip on here. Um, it will fit. It's a little loose just because the stock grip has like little tabs on it that like actually um, stick to the body. This does not just tighten down the screw pretty well, and it, it will it will stay put. I also put some blue uh, uh, thread locker in there as well. On this side of the gun, I added a rail. I have a whole bunch of aluminum rail pieces just sitting around. Um, I wanted something to mount a flashlight to for um, CQP in dark situations. This works perfectly. Um, I don't I don't even have anything on the other side securing it. It's not going anywhere. Um, so pretty, pretty happy about that. <clears throat> um, so for internal upgrade, um, part two, the only thing that I've done, which I've seen on the Facebook form, was add some foam into the top of here. And what that does is it pushes down onto the guide rod and makes this uh, bolt action a whole lot smoother. Um, not really, I didn't fully grasp the concept at first, but after I did it, um, you'll notice it right away. It's a lot harder of a kick because there's not enough, there's not a whole bunch of resistance for when this rod is not aligned. Um, so that helps pretty well. And also another thing I did too, is I added some Loctite to this bolt or to this uh, screw in here to keep this plate um, from coming loose. I noticed after a few games that that was um, probably on its way out and I would have lost that and that, that would not have been a good day. So, I'm going to show you how nicely it recoils. These mags, I'm sure if you guys are familiar with any kind of uh, WE mags, you have the, um, the switch up top, which lets you go from firing it to like uh, dry fire mode. So I have it in dry fire mode. <clears throat> the recoil on this thing is pretty awesome. 
is definitely uh, more noticeable than my WE Scar sometimes, uh, which is currently sitting on the shelf waiting parts. All right, so that is pretty much it for what I've done already to this. Um, I will show you guys a, uh, a mod that I've done real quick for the RA Tech N Pass. Um, in case any of you guys don't know, if you try to drop it in straight, it will not work. Like, you'll get recoil, but the end pass is too far forward in the nozzle, and all of you'll, you'll just get the recoil, and actually, BBs will just kind of just fall out. Um, I did that in a WE PMC um, until I found the mod and fixed it, and I also fixed it on this gun. So, I'll show you that real quick. All you're going to do is pull your bolt out parts aside <clears throat> set that there there are two screws one on either side of the bolt you can go ahead and undo those So that way your nozzle comes freely like so. Um, there is a pin on the back side which you're gonna wanna push out. Let me get my push pin. <clears throat> and you'll wanna find the side, I believe, um, the side that does not have the handle. Flip it over to the other side and that is the one that you can push out. So, and then you can pull your nozzle out. You set the bolt aside. Now, now that you have the nozzle, there is a, another pin in here, which you can go ahead and push out. Like so. And then you can pull apart the nozzle. And just watch this, the return spring when you pull it out. So when you guys pull out the first um, nozzle the first time, you won't have the end pass unless you know, you've already put it in there and realized, oh crap, it doesn't work. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this back part here, and if you look at yours and look at mine, I don't have tabs. Um, I've completely removed the tabs that are on top of the, uh, the nozzle, and then I went, took a Dremel, and went down some even more. This allows for the gas to pass through um, and then allows for the end pass to technically work um, when it's fully closed and then that's where you can start to adjust it. So right now I have my end pass completely closed. Um, it's basically just acting as a stock nozzle. I haven't even um, tried to chrono it um, with adjusting. Uh, I noticed from the stock chrono, from the stock, um, nozzle that's in here the uh the fps dropped to like i don't know six um it could also just because it's you know it's cold in my shop here so really doesn't matter to me as long as it was firing i didn't really care so you can go ahead and put your nozzle back together make sure you put that pin back in <clears throat> and what i like to do is i put in a little bit and then you can take your spring and make sure that gets into its spot as well all right, so once you have that back together, we're basically just gonna put this back into the bolt carrier itself. Slide this back. Make sure when you put the, when you're putting this back into the bolt, kind of have your spring um, vertical to the bolt itself, so it's easier to slide that pin back in. Go ahead and push that all the way back. Then take your pin and just make sure it catches that. Just like so. All right, and go ahead and put those two screws back in, and you're done. Um, you can go ahead and test um, that it shoots properly. There's air coming out, and also you know load it with EBs and see what your uh, <clears throat> FPS is, and adjust from there, depending if you're going to do field or um, CQB. So I'm just going to leave these parts out for right now because we're going to move on to installing 
<clears throat> the RI Tech hammer and firing pin. Um, so the reason why I got the hammer and firing pin is because I kind of figured that these were the most two parts that um, get hit the most. I've already seen the hammer split in half on the uh, AK um, PMC that I was working on. Um, I should have gotten the sear. I heard a lot of people say the sear eventually goes. Um, I'll get that later down the road. I basically just want to put these two parts in before I plan to take this to um, lightning strike in about two and a half weeks just in case my scar isn't up and running by then. So what we're going to do is <clears throat> there is a grub screw in, in this receiver down here right where your selector switch um, sits. You're going to undo that grub screw so you can pull out the selector and then also take out the, um, your selector bar. So go ahead and take that grub screw out and just put that to the side. Right. <clears throat> um, you're going to want to wiggle out your selector switch, just your selector plate, just like so. It will come out eventually, don't worry about it. So you'll be able to pry off the cap. Um, from the selector plate, just make sure you um, just wobble it back and forth and eventually it'll pull out. Um, and then you'll have the piece that's still in here. You can go ahead and kind of just wiggle that out. It will eventually pop out itself. There we go. It is a pretty tight fit, so just take your time. Um, it'll eventually come out. So you can now put that to the side. <clears throat> Alright, go ahead and we can release the hammer, like so. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to take off the pistol grip here um, and the entire trigger assembly box will come out. So once you get your pistol grip off, you can kind of just set that to the side. I have a whole bunch of junk in here because of the thread locker. Keep that there. Clean this up a little bit. Alright. So, last step to get this trigger box out in here is we're going to remove this one pin that's right here on the receiver. So go ahead and knock that pin through. Should just fall right through, like so. And we just place that over there. Now your trigger box should just freely lift up. And there you go. I'm gonna set the body to the side that for right now so the trigger box is actually pretty simple um, you don't have to worry about the trigger or anything you're only gonna be working with the hammer and the, um, the firing pin which is up here so there are two screws um, Phillips heads you're gonna remove those um, actually beforehand you're gonna there's a tiny spring in here um, which is actually for so it's in here. You're gonna take that, remove it. Just watch where it is. Um, you don't want it like flying out. Set that to the side. <clears throat> now you can go ahead and remove these screws. If I remember correctly, the short one is up top, and there is a long one on the bottom. Be careful when you do this. There is a spring right behind here for. Um, the valve locker, I believe. So just be careful when you pull this up. You don't want that shooting everywhere. So you can go ahead and pry this apart carefully. Just like so. So here's that spring I was talking about. And here's your valve locker. I just put these to the side. <clears throat> so 
Now as you can see in here, because you're going to have to remember this um, for when you put this back together, there is a spring in front of the um, firing pin itself. Um, I'll show you how it goes back in, but basically it sits in there and goes in front of the valve, or the, sorry, the pin into that little hole and comes back up towards the camera. Um, you can kind of see how that functions um, a little bit right there. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these parts out. You can kind of just grab the firing pin and pull it straight out. Be wary of the spring that is attached to it. That one that I was talking about. You can actually kind of just leave that in there. You won't even Actually, no, you can take that out. <clears throat> There's a plastic piece that's in front of it. You can take that out as well. Um, kind of just helps you keep track of it. So now you can pull the hammer off itself and the roller pin that's inside of it. So now we have these parts. You can see how the spring works for the hammer long part goes in the back like so and then the shorter part is the one that gives it the tension. <clears throat> so the only thing that we're going to reuse from here is the actual spring um, since RA Tech gives you um, a new roller. So we're just going to take these. Actually I'll keep the roller just in case or anything. You can take this hammer though and throw it in the trash. So here you have a nice hammer. <clears throat> it is steel. Very, very nice. Probably shouldn't have any issues with this. <clears throat> what you're gonna do is you're gonna take the new roller they gave you um, and fit that in to the hammer. Again, be wary of which way your spring. As you notice the spring went. Then you're going to take your pin and just put it on the other side. And there you go. So now you can start to place this back inside. Um, make sure if you want to align up um, the hammer um, pin here will actually move. So if you just want to hold that while um, placing it in, do so. And just be careful that your roller does not. <clears throat> go ahead and start to fit this back in. So once you have wiggled your hammer back into place, um, you can kind of just pull it back and let it sit into the uh, sear so you can keep it out of the way. So what we're going to do now is install the new firing pin. So just to confirm, this is also steel. Um, this is what constantly hits your magazines to release the gas. <clears throat> okay, so so want to make sure when you get the hammer in that your firing pin spring looks like this. Um, the little, the small tab is going to go in front of the solid block right here and then it's going to go, the tension will come on the other side and you can just leave this laying against the, uh, the steel pin like so. So what we're going to do is put the firing pin in. Um, you can kind of just have it come down to the angle and catch that spring. Um, and it's actually going to go up and through it, just like that. So now you can see, just watch, make sure it doesn't shoot out because it tends to want to. Um, it will move like so and do that. <clears throat> so 
So make sure that just stays in place and then you can put your um, locker on afterwards. Keep that in place right there. And then we can take our other piece that we pulled off and put that right here. <clears throat> Alright, so what we're gonna try to do now is we can set this to the side, just don't let that shoot off. The easiest way to um, get your cover back on is you're gonna put the spring and valve locker together first. Um, so your spring kind of just sits in this little groove area. <clears throat> and then the valve locker. Um, goes in like so, you kind of push this forward a little bit. Spring goes up top, the valve locker is on the bottom. Just like that. So now what you can do is, uh, while holding that other piece in, um, kind of just place this back on top. Uh, so you can put the screws back on. There we go. <clears throat> you really want to push the valve locker out of the way so that the um, the one part on the actual firing pin itself moves freely. Um, it kind of has to go over like two separate spots. You'll see it um, there, so that way uh, the valve locker sits below it. So now that's on there, uh, we can go ahead and put the two screws back in. Long one goes on the bottom, short one goes up top. And just to test, you can pull the um, sear here forward and fire trigger. And make sure before you put it back together to put this small little spring back in. It goes here, keeps the, the um, firing pin aligned. Just like so. There you have it. Um, so now we can move forward and put this back into the body. <clears throat> Go ahead and just drop it in there, set it in place, and you can take this pin and put it in so it doesn't move. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to take <clears throat> your pistol grip and install that. So once you have your pistol grip back on, we can move forward to put the selector switch back in as well as, well as the, um, the, the safety locker. <clears throat> Go ahead and lift this back up. Take this piece and you can just kind of slide it in there. Put it back in its place. Do it in a lot easier than it came out. put your pin back through here. Um, there is a spot where the grub screw sits, so make sure this is facing up when you put the selector switch back on. You can kind of just tap that in there. Like so. Make sure that works properly. And then you can go ahead and put the grub screw back in. So once you have the grub screw back in, and the stuff switch is working fine, you can go ahead and put your bolt back in. Slide that forward. Take the recoil spring and the rod. Place that. There you go. Make sure that it all works. <clears throat> Semi. And then full auto. I'm sorry. Full auto. Okay. 
So, there you have it. Um, I'm actually kind of excited to use this gun in uh, a lot more games. Um, I got a couple more mags in, uh, so I think I have like seven total. Um, this gun's awesome to use, and so far I'm really impressed with the WVs. Um, I love my SCAR, um, it's just been a working project from the uh, last owner. However, this gun was straight from the box, and uh, so far, no complaints. Um, so until then, see you guys out in the field. And uh, if you have any more suggestions for tech videos or just general uh, gameplay questions or whatever, uh, just let me know. Uh, Kowalski out.